Put your hands together. Give Jesus praise.
This is not playing. You can be seated, but I'm going to share it. Testimony. We're getting ready to sing one of my favorite songs, and I know it's one of yours, Brother Tim, The Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. We had an encounter in my family this week, and I've been telling Paul for several weeks, I just feel like I'm drawing from a well that's deeper than I ever knew it was. And in the culture that we live in, in the season of the church that we live in, does it matter if you are generations deep or if you're the first generation? You are a well. And you're, if you're new and you're just, you've just now started walking with the Lord, dig in. Dig deep. Pray hard. Read the Word. Study the Word. Get it in your system because you're going to need it. Not only are you going to need it, but your generations are going to need it more than you ever know. So just give me a minute. I haven't really had time to have a good cry about what happened this week. So I'm going to do it with you. Y'all are my family. Y'all are the ones that I love more than anybody in this world. Thank you, Cindy. I was standing in a store this week. My schedule, my schedule had opened up miraculously, and I didn't even realize I had a couple of days that didn't have a lot going on. I was standing in the store, and I got a text from my aunt in Kentucky that said, it's urgent, would you call me? So I called her, and she said, your Aunt Judy is in Cincinnati. Well, Aunt Judy lives in Barberville, Kentucky, three and a half hours south of Cincinnati. And I said, how in the world? She's 80 years old. They passed her. Her husband just died about four months ago, five months ago, and they pastored all of their married life, most of it. Raised three boys, pastoring, moving from state to state, city to city. About the time she would get her children in school and get them settled, they would, the organization that they worked in moved them again, and she was faithful. I've known my Aunt Judy to um, take the seniors' ministry. I told her about you too. She would take the seniors' ministry in those churches, and she would be busy all day long taking the elderly to their doctor's appointments. This woman was faithful. And I got this call. They said, I said, what is she doing in Cincinnati? They, she said, we don't know. She got up to go to Walgreens to get some medicine for a cold, and she ended up on the side of the road in a gas station three and a half hours south, north in Cincinnati. All of her children live in Florida. I said, I'm on my way. Tell me where she is. So I just dropped everything and took off. And Paul was on a roof, and we went to Cincinnati. And I'm going to make a long story short because we're going to sing about the goodness of God. And she can't watch today because she's... They're moving her to Florida today, just yesterday. In four or five days' time, they had to make a decision to move her to Florida where they could better care for her. And she's in great health. She's not, she's not feeble-minded or feeble in her body. She just, had a, when she just had some pneumonia in her lungs. But here's what happened. She, she ended up on the side of a road in Cincinnati, and she told the men, she said, I don't know where I am. And they said, she said, if you'll just help me get back to 75 South, I'll go home. And the man said, you know, I don't really feel good about putting you back on the road. Do you mind if I call the police? Long story short, they called the police and she still didn't know where she was. She couldn't figure out how she got there. Took her to the hospital. She had some pneumonia in her lungs, but that was not the problem. She had carbon monoxide poisoning. She drove for three and a half hours. Don't remember a single second of the trip. Up I-75, three and a half hours north. Pulled off at a gas station. 
She said she must have started coming to herself because she looked at her gas tank and she was on empty. And she remembers that piece. Went into a gas station that turned out to be my, bro- my cousin Brian went north to pick up her car and told the police he was going to make his rounds. He went to where the squad, where the people that helped her, and went to the police and wanted to thank them for what they did. And he said, I want to stop by the gas station that helped my mama. And the police that was on the scene that went to help her said, no, sir, please don't go to that gas station. Those are very dangerous men. And even the police don't go there. My Aunt Judy had told me, she said, Paula, this is before we knew this. She said, I'll, I don't even know how I got in that gas station, but those three men treated me like I was their grandmother. And it's a long story, and we're still finding out miracle after miracle after miracle that God did for my Aunt Judy. But let me tell you something. It is a deep well that we're drawing from. And I told her, I said, the prayers of grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles who served God for years and years and years met you that day, and they drove you. Angels drove you to Cincinnati. She was in big traffic. She got all the way to Redding Road. She was three hours from North Cincinnati. She got to Redding Road where the traffic was awful. But God was faithful to our family. And I'm praying for you today, Aunt Judy. I know the days ahead will be tough. You're making a big adjustment. But we are here. And the faithfulness of God that we're getting ready to sing about today never runs out. I told you last week, you'll never use all the mercies. You will never use all the mercies that are in that well. Let's stand and sing this song. One more bit of information. They, the doctor told her when he found the carbon monoxide, 12 hours later, she still had so much carbon monoxide in her blood. Her, her lungs had pneumonia in them, so that wasn't, it wasn't getting rid of the toxins like they should. So 12 hours later, when it sh- should have been running out of her body, she was still at a very high level of carbon monoxide. They told her the amount in her body should have killed her instantly. But God. I love you. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been so
I pray that the fear inside 
Today, Nathan is standing in for Jim Lipka. Jim is watching us online from OSU Hospital. All of you know Jim. He is our lead usher, security director, maintenance director. He's full-time staff here at the river. He has an infection in his foot and it needs a miracle. The same God that kept Judy Satterfield on the highway and at the beer cave will help Jim Lipka at Ohio State University. I speak the name of Jesus over Jim Lipka right there, right now. Somebody agree with me and let's begin to call on the Lord. I pray for your healing. I pray for your healing.
feel it. As I was worshiping with you today, I noticed change. Thank you, Lord. If you haven't been faithful to the house of God, and now you've made a change and determined to become faithful in your attendance God sees you if you haven't been faithful in your giving your tithes don't condemn yourself God sees when you make up your mind to get on that next step and walk out your faith in your finances in every piece of your life if you haven't been letting go in worship and you decided 2024 I'm going to give more of my worship I'm going to let go of these hands and feet and I'm going to lift my head up to the hills from which comes my help because I know that just above my head is all of the help uh, that I will ever need. And I'm going to give myself in praise. And I'm going to give myself in worship. God sees your commitment. There are people who signed on to this fast that have never fasted before. There are people that are praying out loud in grow groups that have never prayed out loud before. God sees you. He's with you. Take that next step because it's, it's breakout time. It's turn loose time. Amen? I want you to turn to somebody. Now, when I say this, some people obey and some people don't, but don't be double-minded. Don't, don't walk in rebellion. Turn to somebody and say to them, I see you change coming He is faithful. 
Amen. Is he better to you than you deserve? Amen. He certainly has been to me. He is always faithful. And when we take a step toward him, he takes 10 toward us. Turn your hearts to the Father. The children can be released to class. And I get to lead us in our declaration. Um, they'll give you a, the ways you can give online, but there are boxes at each exit from the sanctuary. You can drop your gift in, your tithe, your offering. And what a way to start the new year. Like Pastor said, if, if this is new for you in attendance or in your offering, it's, the, it's January. Start something new. Amen. So if you hold up your offering and declare God's word over that with me. As I give, I declare that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Matthew 6 says that God will watch over me and provide the things I need as I seek him first in Jesus' mighty name. And did he ever, for your sweet, sweet aunt, provide for her. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. And he'll do all the same for all of us. Amen. God bless you all. We love you. Yes. Pastor Paul.